Good evening, everybody. My name is Vladan, and you are watching Spokinia Show. My tonight guest is Anna. Hi there, Anna. How are you? Hi, thank you very much. I'm good, and you? I'm fine. Okay, Anna, so let's start with the question that is on my mind, and uh, I'm always wondering when I think about the education. What are the skills, in your experience and in your opinion, that young people lack most? Um, this, is a, this is a difficult question, because I don't like to generalize, because in, in our field, in these non-formal educational programs that we are doing, uh, it's very, very, very individual who is lacking what kind of skills or who thinks that they are lacking these skills. And uh, I've been thinking about this. And on the other hand, it's also true that uh, there are certain things. I have been facilitating programs more than eight, ten years. That there are certain things that keep coming back as a pattern from young people who participate in our programs. And one of the things that uh, is quite worrying for me to see, and I dare to say it because it was coming from the young people, that they share that uh, they are lacking meaningful, true relationships, connections with people, friends or, or colleagues or romantic relationships that somehow they judge their relationships to be superficial. Mm -hmm. And I somehow see by now that it's not for everyone, but uh, it, it keeps coming back that uh, people struggle to, to build this. And uh, also it, it uh, happened, I think, first time around five years ago, that in our trainings, uh, there are, we are doing all kinds of uh, situations and many times we work with movement. And there was a very simple task to go around the room and look at the people, and stay silent. And uh, when we give a sign, they stop and they simply keep eye contact with the person for seven seconds mm -hmm. without laughing, without reacting, without saying anything. And for some young people, this was a mind-blowing experience. Like they were saying even days after that this simple thing, it, it was really mind-opening and, and it gave them this insight that they don't do this in every day. Mm -hmm. And I can blame the phones and this world in which we are living. But yeah, this is something that they say that they are lacking to to build these connections, to look at someone, mm -hmm. or to be okay to be looked at. Mm -hmm. So basically this, this is highly re related to social skills, if yes. you can say it like that. Yes. And uh, also this example that, uh, that you mentioned, it is also related with uh, younger generations taking each other for, for granted, no? Uh, yes, I would say that uh, there is something about this, but also there is something about comfort. That mm -hmm. with, uh, behind the screen, it's much more comfortable mm -hmm. because I'm not seen like being with a person. And now after a year of pandemic, mm -hmm. I don't know in what direction this is going. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that it's uh, getting worse. And uh, yes, and then in our programs, which are usually eight, ten days long, they have the chance to get a glimpse of how is it to really be part of a group where everybody accepts me in a good case. Mm -hmm. Many times it happens. And uh, how is it when I express myself? How is it when there is a difficulty and, and I don't, uh, and, and I say it. Mm -hmm. that, hey, this is difficult for me, or I'm challenged by this and that. So it's not just the superficial things, because it's easy to to go along with what is happening on social media, because we know what do we have to do to get the likes. Mm -hmm. But in a human situation, it's, it's very different. And there is no opinion. universal recipe. Yes. Get the likes in real world. And there is a risk that you plan something and it will go in a different way or you get a different reaction mm -hmm. from what you plan. Okay, so based on this, 
uh, so definitely there are some stuff that uh, young people are lacking in and which let's say needs to be fixed in some way uh, what is uh, what are the challenges with motivating these young people to actually have the willingness to do this stuff yes uh, I gave up on this mm -hmm. <laughs> because I really believe that the motivation has to come from inside mm -hmm. and uh, I don't believe that I can put motivation mm -hmm. in young people I can be motivated myself mm -hmm. or I can be dedicated in what I'm doing and this might be motivational for someone to watch mm -hmm. but uh, I cannot make someone motivated, I think. And uh, what again is coming back from young people, and I, I also observe that they are struggling with this, that motivation is also something that has to be built, that it's, you will not get an instant result after one day of being motivated. Mm -hmm. Because this is a long-term thing, and... The most challenging thing is to stay motivated mm -hmm. for one thing, for for a year or two or even more. And uh, this also includes that there will be very difficult moments, there will be bad days, and then how to get up again and say, okay, no matter what, I stick to to what I decided. And young people nowadays... Not in all parts of the world, but in most parts of the world, they have plenty of choices. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier to say that, okay, this didn't work out for a week, yeah. and I can choose Something 15 else. other things. Yeah. It's much easier to do this, than, and they are there, and, and you have the chance to choose one, and, and then you do something temporary for another mm -hmm. two, three months, or maybe a year. Yeah. But to keep it for a long term and build it up and build it up again and again and again, I think this is challenging and it's also challenging for me mm -hmm. many times. So it's basically related, this that's a motivation is related to persistence and patience as well in this case. In my opinion, yes. Okay. So uh, a few days ago we asked uh, citizens of Plovdiv what they think about uh, education, quality education in general. So let's see what they said. Personally for me, good education equals um, a place or school, university, whatever it is, that manages to push you into that direction where you can find your quickest, most efficient way of studying and um, absorbing information so that you can put that into use as fast as possible and as efficient as possible and, I don't know, whatever you dream for. Здравейте, здравейте, казвам се Надежска Калечкова и съм майка на три деца. Едното е в 8-ми клас, в 6-ти клас и в 4-ти клас. И а, така доста добре съм запозната с а, материала и с а, образованието му, образованието ни. Също така смятам, че е много важно а, някой наистина адекватен да погледне те учебници, защото нещата, които а, нашите деца а, изучават, просто някой път толкова нараняват, че... Не знам точно как да им се обясни на тези деца. И според мен всеки трябва да има достъп до него, нали? Не е само в някакви специални американски колежи, не трябва да се плаща, нали, за... А, за получил обществото някакво човек образование и тем подобни. И според мен, нали, много хора отиват в чужбина, нали, защото... Uh, няма достъп, достъп точно до такова образование, нали? Например, за едни мои приятели, нали, отиват в Холандия там. Uh, те са с... Uh, как да ви кажа? Програмиране, ама то е рисуване и програмиране, как да кажа, да. Не знам какво е точно името, само че отиват там, нали? Защото тук няма точните условия за това и няма специалисти за това. <laughs> Мисля, че това е от изключителна важност. Може би не случайно се срещаме, тъй като а, съм бъдещ учител по 
български язик и литература и по история. Отделно карам едни допълнителни курсове по Монтесори метод. И съм кандидат от Брено в програма за един час, която вече доста години се развива и официално МОН застава зад нея, Министерството на образованието. Говори се така за една промяна в начина на преподаване пред децата, тъй като много често е срещан модела, в който учителя е малко като стартор, да го нарека в директния смисъл на нещата. Сегашната идея е, може би, децата да се образоват по-самостоятелно. Те сами знаят своите потребности и учителя е там, за да насочва главно. И да развива техния потенциал, тъй като смятам, че всяко дете има своя потенциал и свои силни страни, в които да се изявява. Затова не е случайно, но те харесва даден посмет. Това силно го влече, т.е. той има голяма насоченост от това нещо да се развива. И това мога да кажа. Изключителна важност от децата да могат да развият своите знания и умения, които изначално възможност. И правилният начин е чрез насочване, чрез разбиране, чрез подкрепа и слушване. Да, от големи до малки и всъщност никой не харесва да му се налага чуждо мнение, чужда воля. Идеята е да имаш свобода на изразяване, на действие и тогава сам разбираш, сам почваш да се обучаваш. Поне аз така разбирам новите методи, които се отпитват да бъдат приложени в образователната система. Окей, Яна, какво е образование за тебе? Аз имам мастер диплома in mm -hmm. adult education management mm -hmm. and the path there was the following in elementary school i was the best student mm -hmm. this is uh, eight years for for hungarians and uh, and i really liked the school i was successful in in the studies and this changed completely when i went to high school. I really, really liked this high school where I went to, but mostly because of because of the teachers who who I somehow had this uh, perception that they really liked to, to teach there. Mm -hmm. And also because of the social life and, and friends who I had in the high school. Uh, but I didn't have very good grades mm -hmm. there. It was also very competitive, but there were a lot of things organized for for socializing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was very, very good for me, and I really liked it. And uh, then when I went to university, it was again another story. I remember so well, in the end of high school in Hungary, we have a big exam. Mm -hmm. And based on the points that you get for these exams, you can go to university what you choose or not okay and i was extremely stressed about this and somehow back then i was i was 19 years old i believe that if i don't go to university it will be shameful it the world will stop it will be terrible and there were already some programs to do a gap year but it was not an option for me somehow mm -hmm. I felt like this is expected from me to go to university. And I got into a university, not the one that I uh, wanted to go first, mm -hmm. but maybe it was the third in, on the list. And, uh, and I didn't like it and it was very, very theoretical. I, when I got my bachelor diploma, I didn't know what these people are doing in this profession. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just wanted to survive. <laughs> and I wanted to get the paper, and uh, this was back to motivation. It was not a good motivation for me. Okay. And for, I think for ten years, I didn't even touch this diploma, so it was not even necessary. Mm -hmm. How I believe. And uh, during these university years, I went to my first uh, non-formal educational programs, and and there I discovered that it's. Uh, 
completely different thing. Mm-hmm. And there is so much to learn and and to discover okay. apart from what is taught in university. Okay, so based on this that you said, you have experience with uh, university education, so let's say formal education. You are particip- you participated in a lot of these non-formal education as participant, as youth worker, as a trainer. So what are the key differences for you between these two types of formal and non-formal education? And the, in my eyes, the most important thing is that that uh, non-formal education is is voluntarily. Mm-hmm. If you want to learn something, you go. Mm-hmm. If you want, you stay in the program. Mm-hmm. If you don't want, you don't stay. Mm-hmm. Yet, there are a lot of people who come to our programs and they start to act out this formal education. I think as if they would be forced, mm-hmm. but uh, basically they are not. Mm-hmm. Nobody is forced to go and travel and do internships or participate in training courses. This is completely up to you. Mm-hmm. And from this moment, there are a lot of things during the program that is really up to you. Mm-hmm. You learn what you want to learn. You focus on your own things. Mm-hmm. It's happening in a group context. And uh, the other thing is that in in formal education, usually there is, uh, at least this is how it goes in Hungary, mm-hmm. <laughs> there is a teacher or professor who tells you uh, the subject mm-hmm. for 45 minutes. And you need to memorize, and later there is a test okay. where you are evaluated if you could memorize what was said or not. Ninety-nine mm-hmm. percent. This is the how it's it's happening yeah. in Hungary. In our programs, first there is a situation or or how to call it. We call it processes or session. You have an assignment mm-hmm. individually or or in a group context, and you need to do something. Mm-hmm. And then we sit down. And we asked, what did you learn? Mm-hmm. What did you do? And if we have 30 people, each of them will say something different and it's okay. Mm-hmm. But they evaluate themselves no, it's something like, what they learned. Yeah, it's something like self-evaluation process instead of somebody else, professor or teacher, evaluating the students. Yes. And this is also very... It might be very difficult and strange for the first time because we are really conditioned for someone else to tell me if it was good what I did or not. Mm-hmm. Many times people are first time like, oh, I need to evaluate it like yeah. that. No, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me if I was good or not. You tell me what do I need to do. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm, I started with the thing that it's voluntary. So it, it's all your responsibility. If you want to learn, you go to learn. It's your responsibility how you participate. Mm-hmm. What you learn, what you get out of it, it's it's all yours, and this is a big difference. Okay, so uh, there is this key difference in the evaluation of the whole process. But uh, what is the how does non-formal education influence people the most? What is the most influence visible when somebody has some type of non-formal education, be it a program or something? What is the biggest key point here? Mm-hmm. This is also a generalization, but mm-hmm. I would say that they are more likely to initiate something. Mm-hmm. Maybe this this is the most important thing that I see many times that that uh, yeah, socially somehow they are more open mm-hmm. and accepting others, and also that they have more confidence in initiating something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you had the ability to add one subject to school that uh, most of the people attend, be it elementary or or high school, what would that subject be? I would uh, not add, I would keep. Mm -hmm. Because in elementary school and in kindergarten there are a lot of things to do by hand, Mm -hmm. to build, to create alone or in a group to create something together and in in Hungary in my experience this fades away somewhere around high school okay. where the subjects and, and the tests and these exams are more important mm-hmm. and I would really keep this especially nowadays when this is most of the 
<laughs> things that we motor do, like skills, yeah. what we have. I think it's extremely important to create something by hand, mm-hmm. also individually and and. If people are creating something in a team, then also there is a lot of things to to learn. Mm-hmm. So I would I would keep I don't know in elementary school we had a cooking class and for the for the boys they were building electric systems and these kind of things and then in high school there was nothing like this mm-hmm. and I think it would be essential to keep this kind of stuff yes. during the. Or education. even in uh, in university mm-hmm. to have one subject where this is this is there. Mm-hmm. Okay, Anna, thank you so much for being with me tonight. Thank you very much. And we are now going to see what Smokinha team did at May and what are the plans for the next few weeks. Smokinha team had a really exciting and promising May this year. More and more partners are approaching us with training courses that have been postponed for months and which are finally going to happen this summer. Check out our website for the newest opportunities for Bulgarian residents, but also for residents all across Europe. Still, probably the most exciting news is the one about Catch Your Moment training course that will happen here in Plovdiv and that will be organized by Smokinia Foundation. During 8 days, we will host participants from more than 10 countries across Europe. If you want to practice your ability to react in the moment, adapt quickly to new situations, improvising and many other skills, be sure you apply to this training course. The deadline is 10th of June. Long preparation for Smokinia Club is going to give results really soon. And as we are preparing for inviting more people, we finished with the first phase of setting up a new office for the team. We already had one day scenery training and if you want to learn more about solving problems and dealing with these difficult times, be sure you join us at our first Smokinia Club gathering, 10th of June. This Saturday we participated in a clean initiative in Plotlip, organized by Zero Waste Green Revolucia and Business Lady Club. And we are more than happy to invite you to join us in further initiatives which we organize and in which we participate. We are also inviting you to join us at our next Kinedog screening. At the well-known location of Peck Cafe, 3rd of June, we will gather to see a Hungarian documentary movie provided by our partners Kinedog Bulgaria. The movie about the infamous Budapest ghetto will have Bulgarian and English subtitles. This was just a part of what is coming. If you want to be sure that you are the first to get the newest information about opportunities, trainings, educations and much more, be sure you subscribe to our monthly newsletter. Link is in the description. If you want to be the first to know about opportunities and news from Smokinia Foundation, be sure you subscribe to our newsletter. It's on our website and the link is in the description below. This was everything for tonight. Thanks for staying with me until the end. While you are waiting for the new episode of Smokinia Show, be sure you follow us on our social media. It's, the links are also in the description below. Have a nice evening.